What's going on guys? Chase, ChaseWins.com coming to you for Monday the 24th of February 2020. Let's get you on a Monday recap, or a Sunday recap, tell you what we got going on for Monday. Monday for the first time in almost a month we do have a game of the week. I will not say what sport it's in or what time it starts. Obviously, the game is tonight. Uh, the play must be purchased by 6 p.m. Eastern time because at 6 p.m. Um, when I leave my office tonight, I mean, it's early this morning. Um, once I get to the office um, today, Juan, our new um, computer model builder, is uh, flew in last night. And he'll be getting his office set up and acclimated. So every few weeks when he flies in, he'll be ready to go. I'll go into more detail with that. Um, on another video or tomorrow's live show um, but getting all that set up going to the office for the entire afternoon 6 p.m. when I leave uh, my daughter has practice tonight obviously I'm the coach so we have to be there at 7 so at 6 p.m. the link will be pulled down out of office message going up and I am literally going MIA for the remainder of the night and uh, until Tuesday morning when I resume normal business um, so it does have to be purchased by then. Um, if you do not purchase it by then, and you try to email me after 6 p.m., um, I won't even see it till Tuesday or till very late Monday night. So make sure you do that. Uh, make sure to be a winner. If uh, for some reason it were to lose, guarantee is uh, you get three days of all plays, all sports, premium and daily top plays, absolutely free, no questions asked. So we'll do that. What else do we got? Patrick had another fantastic NASCAR day, another sweep. Um, I'm going to do a separate video that's strictly dedicated to his NASCAR, and um, it will be posted shortly after this one gets posted, so that way we can try to keep this one as short as possible. Um, there will be a little promo code within the NASCAR video that will help you um, get a little perk when when purchasing NASCAR, so make sure you pay attention to that. The uh, Like I said, the game of the week is already posted full multi-page write up everything i'm excited about the game i actually played the game overnight was at the office till 2 a.m um i only have about two hours of sleep but i think it'll be worth it with everything we did congrats to the five mlb winners one person has not claimed their prize yet they have until 12 noon to do so otherwise it will be given to the runner-up who has already been drawn um so keep that in mind if that is you it's not that we're pushing you you don't want it that's no problem whatsoever we just you know kind of kind of be nice to know instead of waiting around so um what do we got i think that's it normal packages as always 50 for three days 99 for seven 299 for 30 um, but yeah i think that's it game of the week make sure you go jump on that um and then patrick's nascar march madness package is up 199 for all of march madness that is every premium and daily top play that i have from the start of conference championships and conference tournaments all the way through all the march madness tournaments until there is no more basketball to be played um, so that's going to start here in just over a week um, as most teams round out their season. So you will be getting plays as soon as the conference tournaments begin. And um, you will be getting all premium and daily top plays that I have from that point forward until college basketball has completed. One ninety nine. dollars it's, it's on the website as well. Make sure you jump on that. And I really think that's it for now. Let's get on a recap of yesterday. Six plays yesterday on my card in um, three different sports. Oh, shit. Give me just one second. I want to make sure that I remove. Okay, there's that. Updated college basketball uh, rankings and stats have been entered being that most of the night will do for you. Uh, the new updated top 25 will be going over on tomorrow's live show, as it always is on Tuesdays. So make sure you tune into that, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Yesterday, NBA one play, Chicago Bulls plus two and a half. Easy outright winner from start to finish. Kobe White, fellow Tar Heel, congrats, brother. Another 30-point-plus game off the bench. Hopefully uh, you'll be a full-blown normal starter here soon and all the people that doubted you are learning that uh 
You don't doubt that. So 1-0 in the NBA. <clears throat> NCAA basketball, three plays. Northern Iowa, minus 10. Colgate, minus 17. And Ohio State, minus 2.5 over Maryland. All easy start to finish winners. Colgate was a blowout. So a 3-0 and day in NCAA basketball. And then an NHL, two plays. One premium, one top play. Premium was Edmonton on the money line, minus 130. Easy winner. And then the Islanders in regulation, minus 135 was our top play for a 2-0 and day in the NHL. For a 6-0 and clean sweep for Sunday. Not a single loss. Not a single game that even came close to losing. Um... And so if you rate it by unit, the way our system works, one unit per premium, three units per top play, you would have picked up eight units yesterday. And then if you were an all-access client or you purchased the NASCAR card as well, Patrick swept the board again. So you would have picked up an insane amount of profit yesterday. But again, I'll save the full breakdown for the NASCAR video. We're going to address some pretty serious stuff in that. So make sure you tune in to that. But another fantastic day. Congratulations after, you know, somewhat of a rough Saturday. I told everyone we'll finish out the week strong like we always do. And we did so. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's get on a free play. Besides the game of the week, this is the only other game that I've added to the card already and already wagered on. The rest will come this afternoon. But it is an NBA play that I love. Um, Houston Rockets, New York Knicks, 8 o'clock tonight. Eastern Time Rockets laying 14 with a total of 229.5. Caesars has 230, but I'm seeing 229.5 pretty much everywhere else. William Hill included. And that's what I played. So um, I'm going with the under 229.5 here. Um, typically, games involving the Rockets, 230 is about a normal line to come out. And being able to breach 240, 250, it isn't. You know, something that's uncommon for them. Um, nobody that plays them is allowed to play defense per the James Harden rule. I don't know if anybody's aware of the NBA's regulations on that, that you're not even allowed to sneeze in the same room as him or you will be called for a technical. So make sure you do that. You don't want to um, get anywhere near and try to defend the most overrated offensive player, if not the most overrated athlete in the NBA and maybe NBA history. It's ridiculous. He's such a chump. Uh, Westbrook is really the only person on the Rockets that knows what defense actually is, but he doesn't play at a high enough level to make up for the other four guys on the court at that time to not do anything. Houston is a run and gun -em team that relies solely on out scoring you um, and just putting up points in droves. Most of the, most nights. It would be a pretty safe bet to say that they'd be able to do that to New York and breach a 14-point spread with ease. Problem is, New York's coming into this game rested. They're coming into games now ever since Christmas, like I told you guys they were going to start doing with game plans. They're actually building scouting reports. So even though they're still getting beat by teams, have you noticed that they're hanging in games? They're making it tough. They're doing things where you can tell that they studied this team and this M.O. leading up to it. They're going to do that with Houston. They've been in Houston for almost the entire day off. It's not like they just flew in this morning or late last night. They were actually, to have a, they were actually able to have a full-blown practice and team scrimmage yesterday at Houston's practice facility in which Houston didn't do anything more than a player-driven shoot-around. Obviously, what would you expect? They had a game, so. But, player-driven shooter on yesterday. Um, lasted about half an hour in Salt Lake City, and then they had the game. Today, um, from what I've been told, Houston is not getting together and doing any uh, type of mandatory anything. It uh, is up to the player's discretion if they come and get loose before having to be at the arena for, you know, preparation of the game. So what we're going to have here tonight is a is a Houston team that is not only on the second of a back-to-back -back night. They played the first leg of it on the road. And it wasn't just a standard road trip. It was in Salt Lake City, so a lot of elevation. So fatigue is worse. And what surprised me last night watching that game as closely as I did uh, involving Houston 
was the fact that you would have thought in certain situations had they would they be able to rest some guys a little bit longer on the bench, rotate a little bit heavier to ensure that they try to save as much energy and stamina as they could, knowing that they were going to come home, have to play a back to back, and be able to want to just put the, this um, this game against the Knicks away. They did not. They ran faster and they ran harder than I thought they would. Period. And I really think that you're going to see the effects of that tonight as the beginning of the fourth quarter last night, their production as far as overall speed and pace of play went down almost 35% just like that. What do you think is going to happen after traveling back from Salt Lake City, not getting a good night's sleep, having to get up today, know that they've got the Knicks on deck, think that it's already over, come in. And you know that Houston's only MO to win games is run fast. By the second half, you're going to see at least a 25% drop in production. By the fourth quarter, I think you see pace of play drop 50% from what Houston's normal is. What that's going to do is allow New York, who is rested, ready, and prepared, to keep pace a lot better than they would. That's going to allow them to force more turnovers from the perimeter. That's going to allow them to guard Houston better, where it's not going to stop Houston from scoring. It's going to allow Houston less scoring opportunities as a whole because they're going to start burning more shot clock. They're going to start taking shots closer to the end. So when it actually comes down to it, their overall shot percentage of, of shots attempted, I think, drops 12 to 14 percent. That, along with Houston or uh, New York being able to keep pace a little bit better for some of the game and being able to ramp it up there at the end when Houston completely runs out of gas, I think that's going to cause New York to get more possessions, be able to burn time of possession because they know that that's going to be one of the key factors that they can and have to do if they want to even be in this game. And I think that it's also going to, like I said, force more turnovers, which again will have New York holding the ball longer, whether they score or not. It's just being able to keep the ball out of Houston's hands the less times they have to score the better. This game normally would be set at somewhere around 229, and the public would blindly bet the over, and for good reason. But today, the money's coming in on the over. The public's doing the same thing, blindly betting the over against one of the worst teams in the NBA, even though they're becoming one of the more improved teams, as I've stated for the last almost three months, and nobody wants to listen. But tonight, if I had to take a guess, if somebody had a gun to my head and said, take your best guess of what you think the total score is going to be, my total score would be 215. I think that it stays under 220 and does not reach 230. So that is your free premium play. Knicks, Rockets, under 229.5. Thanks, guys.